Hey guys, welcome to Sales Rally. I'm Mike Cox from Mortgage Nerds. And I'm Brian Hoffman from Mortgage Nerds. Yes, you are. Welcome to Sales Rally, guys. So today we're going to be speaking to the newer brokers out there, right? Um, the people that maybe made the leap within the last few months, six months, or even in the last year. We've made our leap in the last 18 months, made some mistakes, figured some things out. We thought we'd share that with you guys uh, today. So um, you made the tr transition, now what, right? Hopefully you had a seamless transition. I know I was stressed out during that time. It was not good. And I wasn't, I was ready to jump out of retail as quick as possible. Yes, he was. So everybody's experience is a little bit different, but hopefully you had a, a good one and you've been in, um, the industry here for a little while got your feet wet and now you're like how do i how do i ramp this up how do i get things right how do i move forward so we're here to help you with that um at least our perspective now that you're here what do you do what do they do well one of the biggest things that i think that we should have probably done a little bit more but learned throughout this process is to lean on the broker community lean on aim the people the experienced people in the industry because there's more than enough that are willing to help somebody out. Um, Thousands. Right, and it would have made, and we had some key players that really helped us through mm -hmm. the transition, but it was, we could have even had more. Absolutely, you know? and we we sometimes wouldn't reach out to those people because we'd have questions every single day, and we're like, oh, they're, they're annoyed, right? Right. Yeah. When you have hundreds or thousands of people out there or a group that you feel comfortable asking questions, you get all the different feedback, it's phenomenal. But I think for me, a challenge was like, I came from retail for 20 years. There is nothing like that out there. There's not a group of retail people going, let's help each other. Let's build each other up and, and uh, make everybody better. No, they're competition completely. Right. And that's one of actually like for the wholesale side, something I wasn't expecting is the buildup of everybody. Oh yeah. The wanting to see you succeed. The, you closed 30 loans this month. That is so awesome. There's, you know, there's help through every part of this process. And it's it's an amazing, amazing group. Yeah, and it, it's weird at first. And then you get used to, you know, jumping in the group, asking questions, and you see the benefit of that. Then you start participating, answering other people's questions, and becoming part of that community. And then you have relationships with people online, and you meet them in person, and they're good people, and then they become friends. Yeah. Like, really, mm -hmm. it's super cool. Yes. So yeah. lean on the community, ask questions, but, um, that's just it though. You have to be active in it. I know a lot of people that are on Brokers Are Better and different groups. They're just back there, not saying anything, or maybe a like here and there. You know, yeah, you are. You have to be an active participant in the community um, to get the answers or, you know, to get what you need out of it. So the, mo the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Agreed? Absolutely. And I would actually say too, so fuse. Okay how important it is to go like literally the, the one that we went to in September where you spoke at mm -hmm. we Brendan McKay you know he gave us a tip on a lender and it actually started changing our no 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 it did it, it changed our business yeah it did I mean it that little bit of a connection that little nugget literally took us from here to here and had a conversation described a pain point he gave us um, some information that changed it, um, changed our business for the better. And as a bonus, Brendan's a really good dancer. He is. He's just <laughs> seen. I missed it. Yeah, he is. He's Brendan McKay. Yeah. But yes, stuff like that. That's what it's about. Building the relationships, identifying challenges, and then hopefully you're able to do that for somebody else. But be active in the community. Right. Right. There's tons of people that aren't. And I think that they're afraid to for whatever reason. You will be treated with respect. You will be um, educated based on that person's knowledge. If for any reason that you are not treated um, kindly in any way, I'm sure Katie will come in and smack them around or somebody will in the community. Um, it's just not tolerated. However, disclosure, um, if you are a quick and approved broker, um, there will be many of us out there that will um, try to educate you on why that's not a good thing or what, um, why Quicken isn't good for our industry as a whole. And I won't go into all that now. Um, you can do whatever you want. You are an independent mortgage broker. You make your own decisions. Um, it's just that as a community, there's a philosophy, and I think a lot of people would, would 
feel comfortable just educating you in a kind way, right? Would you yeah. agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And if you want more information, go to rocketsblowup.com. All right. As for the broker community, um, everybody helping out, why do you think that everybody does that? Well, definitely stronger together as a community. Mm -hmm. The more we have, the more power we have, the better, the more successful we can be helping people along the way. No, there's a broker a mile down the road. He's not competition. The retail side is competition. Mm -hmm. You know, I will gladly help him close a loan. Literally came into my office a couple days ago, talked about it. We're like, get an LE from you. I'll say, nope, you're in the right spot. Let's go after retail. Let's crush them. You know, it's not us against each other, right. you know? Yeah. And that's the community that we're in. It's so, so cool. Right. Um, yeah, we'll always be stronger together. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people do it. And it's a lot of people just want to give back because somebody else brought them in, helped them out, just a way to uh, pay back the community. Yeah. Right. Right. So what were uh, some of your biggest challenges when we came over? Me? Oh, boy. So Brian and I have, have a different dynamic. Um, I do more upside uh, HR compliance. Brian crushes loans. So for me, wrapping my head around all of it, um, it was, what do I do first? Which one's more important? You know, the compliance aspect of it, getting deals in, doing it the right way. And I, honestly, so everybody's got their own opinion. You're asking questions. And they're like, nope, you do it this way. You ask somebody else, they do it that way. Well, then you have to start asking, well, are you a broker? Are you non -dial? Like, What state are you in? There's so many levels and you have to decipher all that. Um, just get, getting it all figured out and then figuring out what was the most important and then executing some stuff or like getting stuff done rather than working on 50 things at once. Mm -hmm. Because we came in and we we're like, we got 50 applications, let's do this. And we're yeah. like, hold like, on, wait, wait, we don't have credit bureau yet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then, I mean, navigating too, like yeah. the whole VA aspect of things to get, getting your approvals. We were told when we first started like, hey, that's all you have to do is have your application and you're gonna be able to close five loans and you're good to go, nothing to worry about. And all of a sudden we're like, no, um, yeah, you actually need your approval back. Well, how long is that taking? I got 10 VA loans in the pipeline right now, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, here's another um, nugget, vet everything. Everybody's uh, trying to give you good advice. Maybe it's old advice, whatever it may be. Everybody's trying to help. However, it's not always 100% fact. So do get a couple sources, make sure it's accurate, especially on the bigger, higher level items. Right, yeah, I mean, when we first started, Coming from retail, the rates where we were at, how much higher they were, you know, our fees. And, and we were so excited like, as far as what we could offer our, our clients. Right. And all of a sudden, then COVID hit. Well, so back up. So in the first two months, like, it felt like chains came off. And hopefully you guys out there, the newer people, you're feeling that right now. Like, you just were let free. Now you get to make your own bad mistakes. Your own bad decisions. Bad so, decisions, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but you're free and you're seeing the amazing rates and costs, the ones that we used to say, those don't exist, right? Literally one of our loan officers was crying because she was so happy. She's like, this is effing amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. It was so cool. Then COVID hit, but were we, what, it was a good and a bad. Yep. I mean, obviously with the rates and things like that, business coming in wasn't an issue. Okay. Yep. So we weren't worried about that, but, the changes that happened in the guidelines, the lenders, all of that came into play. And all of a sudden we're going like, whoa, what do we do? And I chased price, fully admit it, because I, I was just going, I can offer this for my customer. I chased price and figured well, when out. when you don't have price for a long period of time, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, this is sexy and great. I right. love it, right? But there's more. Yeah, so then we, different lenders, getting set up, learning their system, dealing with, how their ops work and all of a sudden you have turn times that are changing mid you know mid transaction and yeah. things like that and i was like well this we never had to do this before you know and that actually we we got kicked a little bit there yeah um but we came back stronger and it actually allowed us to build what we thought was important as far as the price the process of the lenders whatever it took mm -hmm to align with those people who have the same thoughts that, that we, we do and how important a closing date is and mm -hmm. you know things like that. And once we narrowed down our field and 
found who we like, who works well with us. And then cut off Lone Sifter for everybody else. Yeah, I mean, it was that was game changing. Yeah, yeah, so we evaluate each lender now on price and process equally, right? Um, it doesn't matter if you have the best price and then it's painful, misclosing or whatever. So we, I think we were up to like 16 lenders. Right. It was ridiculous, right? But we knew we were gonna sign up for a bunch and then um, dwindle them down. So now we're down to four and a half, I would say. Right. Um, and we stick with those and they give us everything that we need. They're great partners. And here's a few questions, or here's a few things I would um, bring up with any lender that you're, you know, working with or you know want to make a strong strategic partnership with is on a purchase transaction do you and what after a file has been submitted can turn times change during you know the process of that loan and for us any lender that says yeah i mean anytime they change it change for everybody or whatever we won't work with that lender because that means you know you're in for a pre-approval it's gonna be five days and now it just went to two weeks now you miss a closing date or all that kind of stuff. It makes us look bad. They don't understand the purchase market. We're out. Yep. Right. Absolutely. And we just had a lender okay. in, in the other day, went through all that with them. He was like, whoa, yep. I'm like, well, sorry. This is our criteria. And so things like that, like you can have these conversations with lenders, right? Mm -hmm. And make sure that you're getting um, what you're looking for and then your expectations. You know, if they say, nope, it actually changed it. At least you know. You know that it could be a possibility right yeah i mean look for those lenders that are your partner i mean what does it mean I, partner well they have your back they want you to succeed they want you to get to the close they care about your reputation all of it all of it uh is part of a partnership yep and when the those lenders are saying we will not let you miss a closing date like this is closing they're saying it not us right like, Yep, you're a good partner. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's underwriting good. is key. Looking for, you know, good underwriting, solid, right. uh, all that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to vet them all, go through it, go, get your criteria, and just narrow it down, depending on how big you are. If you're a one man shop or if you're a, you know, 50 man shop, whatever it is, narrow it down to a set and then build your systems around those. You'll be, have much more success doing that than trying to navigate everybody's different systems and different uh, things nuances for everybody's mm -hmm. you know yeah. platform cool uh to back up real quick so for some of you guys out there that don't have um connections in the community i'm going to give you a little cheat sheet of some people that are very active and in, um, um in the community and will definitely help you out so we have jackie dunlop so she's amazing at processing and anything workflows uh chris uh griffith anything va related he's on a mission to help veterans and he's doing something really special over there. Yeah. Great guy. Met him one time. Phenomenal guy. Cool guy. Even better beard. Yep. <laughs> uh, Jamie Cavanaugh, she does amazing at ops and contract negotiations. I didn't even know that was a thing when we did all of our um, contracts that you can negotiate or, you know, remove things out of the contract right. and all that kind of stuff. We figured that out after the first year. Yep. Hey, this is why we're here teaching you our mistakes. Uh, Brendan McKay. Documented workflows, templates from start to finish. He has email templates, everything. It's phenomenal. Uh, Chad Katani, he keeps it real. He, uh, he tells it like it is. If you want honest feedback with no sugar, he is your man. Todd Bitter, um, he can give you advice on how to be a one-man robot. Um, he's a one-man show, um, does it all by himself, processes everything, and puts up stupid numbers. Be look behind me, what would Todd Bitter do answer your damn phone he would say um and then you have evan wade operations and scaling um evan's trying to take over the world by the end of the year and then we have the loan bros at mayor's mortgage um, marketing on jumbo loans and their weekly action plans sam parker from uh my credit guy great friend amazing amazing credit repair he's got a great company there um there's no one even close all those people will be happy to help you out in any way that uh, they can reach out and you'll know. Um, but those are just a few people, right? Oh yeah. There's, there's numerous people out there. Right. Yeah. Ask the question, somebody will jump in or take somebody that has that specialty mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to do that. Um, hundreds, if not thousands of people in that community that are very, very active and willing to give advice. Yeah. Okay. So lean on the community mm -hmm. and aim. All right. 
Another big thing or challenge um, or something you need to consider before you get too far in, picking the right tech stack from the beginning. All right. Yeah. All yeah. things work together. Right. I mean, we literally, I mean, we, I mean, Evan, we had, he helped us a ton. And so we jumped on, you know, a lot of the stuff that he kind of was using because it worked for him and whatnot. But we've been on Arrive since day one. Day one. Um, I don't know. I mean, we, we, I guess we were in blank for a little bit there just for the fact of that's, it was UWM. We were starting out. And of course they're, and the, they help us. We yeah, shouldn't. Help so what, what he's saying there is what we did is when we first started, uh, we didn't get licensed before we left our other company. We waited and we had all these applications coming in. And then um, we actually used blank at UWM first before we did um, had credit or uh, yeah, our credit vendor set up and our um, LOS. Right. And then it got confusing because we had to switch them from this to that. We were just run, going a thousand miles per hour trying to get deals in the door. Mm -hmm. Not saying you shouldn't do it. It just gets a little messy. You know, you may want to slow your roll, take 60 days and get ramp it up. Uh, we were just putting everything in and going with it. Yeah. But yeah, we used Blink and uh, their credit, or UWM actually paid for our credit bureaus for the first 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Tech stack. So LOS, CRM. Um, just everything, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? And you're signing up for stuff because you need it. And I think a lot of times you can ask the community, Hey, I have this, do you have something that works well with this? Right. right. There's so much out there. There's so many shiny objects, all that kind of stuff. Um, ask the community best practices, um, because you'll find out, nope, I had that. It didn't have this. And so I switched to this. And sometimes actually they can help you even with setups and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So tech, very important. And, you know, some lenders don't always have the best tech either, their sites. So navigating their sites, make sure you utilize their AE or your AE, have them go through the site from start to finish. We kind of just jumped in and uh, figured it out on our own. That's how we're wired. Um, then we missed little things that we um, could have done better oh, yeah, at the beginning. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. take the time. And I would even say, um, set it up with your AE, go through from start to finish their system, loom record it so you have it referenced so you don't have to keep contacting them and you always have it like, oh, how do I upload the, uh, whatever. Right. Yep, you have that there. So a little nugget for you. Mm -hmm. All right, pick the right tech stack. And again, if you really want to get into that, call Evan Wade. He loves it. Mm -hmm. um, pick the right lending partners. We talked about that. How do we evaluate them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want? On that, no, I think we're good there. As far as AE goes, I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, I've got a great AE. I got a, you know, my AE." We don't really rely on our AE for much, right? Because our we pick the partners where there's not we're not running into problems. Right. I am. I am one that I don't like to talk to the AE. I don't if unless I have a problem, I just want to be able to do my thing, close loans and things. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to have I I love them all. They're great people, but. It, you know, it's just me to where I just want to get my loans closed. So yeah. I don't lean on an AE that often unless yeah. it's an absolute ne necessity. You mainly talk to most of our AEs. Yeah, um, I do. And just keep the communication and, you know, I, the relationship. There. I manage that relationship and let, you know, what can we do as a, a broker to, you know, uh, do better on uh, put in files or whatever it is to make things go through smoother. They ask the same thing. We go through those things and work out any challenges that we have. But. It's usually very rare. Um, yeah, so don't sign up with a, a, a lender just because you know they have a great AE or that kind of stuff. They, that will not make or break you, in my opinion. No, I agree. All right, so this is a good one. Pick your battles strategically, all right? So this is, again, back to what I was saying when I first came on, head spinning, like, what do I do first? All right, I'm going to run through this real quick. These are all, I don't know if you're a one-man shop, two-man shop, or 50 people. These are all things you have to worry about every day. Um, so there's a ton on your plate um, all at the same time. You have HR, compliance, marketing, call reports, branding, lender signups, contract negotiations, VA approvals, creating your own unique workflow and process, comp plans, pricing, payroll, Pricing loans, working on applications, getting files submitted and closed, credit bureau company selection, and inspections, 
online application, lead funnels, websites, CRM, social media pages, lead generation, early payoffs, relationship management, recruiting, hiring, training, firing, accounting, Google ads, Google My Business, guideline mastering, five-star review strategies, continue ed, and last but not least, getting ready for views. So I mean, honestly, I don't know how a one-man shop can do it. I know it's definitely possible. There's very many successful one-man shops. However, there is so much that we didn't know going into it as far as all the nuances of what needed to be done. Right. You know, and I was it, very daunting. Um, and that's where the leaning on people and the help comes in to where you can get that dialed in. So here's my honest opinion on this is may not sit well with everybody, but if you're a one to two man shop or no, actually I say a one man shop and how do you do all this stuff? I would say at, at the beginning, not well. So if you've been a one man shop and you've been in the business, you know, for three years, whatever you, you got this stuff figured out, but you just started, you're six months in anybody that's telling me they have all this stuff mastered. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not possible in my book. So you do, you figure it out and then you start dialing it in and then you get better and better and it gets easier and easier and you get more resources and then, then you start getting it all figured out. But if, mm -hmm. if, if you get audited in the first three months of, of being a, a mortgage broker and it's your first time being one, it wouldn't be good. Right. No, yeah. It's definitely a learning curve for sure. Yeah. It's a lot. And, and I have like, we use strategic compliance. I love them. Um, they help us a lot. We talk to them almost daily because I'm just, I just want to know for sure. Um, have your resources to help you with all this stuff. Um, but what I'll tell you, and the smart man once told me, pick a couple of these, tackle them, execute them, and then move on to the next, right? But understand that the other ones are going to have to suffer a little bit during that time, right? So your five-star review strategy is not going to be coming out in the next three or four months because you have to work on these other things. So don't let it bother you that you don't have that yet. You'll get to it. Concentrate on a couple things, get them done, move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Casa. All right. Um, yeah, so it's a lot, lot for anybody, no matter, you know, team or not. Um, next thing, number six, measure all data and make data-driven decisions, decisions to fine tune your company. You will thank me later. So that goes in so many different layers in, in the data. Yes. You want to touch I mean, base data, on that? And, well, we're completely data driven, you know, where your successes are coming, where, you know, where your failure, failures are to where you, you know, can dial back or uptick what needs to be done. The data doesn't lie and it drives everything uh, in Sim our business. Simple, like things that I don't know if everybody does, but like a file that has an appraisal waiver. Um, how fast can we get that through our system? So we, we say how many files we close, but how many of those files were appraisal waivers? So we put them in a separate bucket from application to close. How, what's our average, uh, I'm sorry, application to clear to close because that's when all the work is done. Mm -hmm. Like we break all these things down, get all the data and then we fine tune it, try to make it better. It's just, it's a good way to fine tune your business because um, you're making strategic decisions, not emotional ones. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Measure all data, find ways to do that. Sometimes it's a manual process too. Not all tech things do exactly what you want to do. You got to find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. I like this one. Enjoy the freedom you now have to make your own bad decisions instead of some guy sitting at a desk from 10 to four that has never written alone in his life, making bad decisions for you. I'm going to expand on that. Well, you're an independent mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. You, if you are a broker owner, you have the right to make all decisions for your business, whether good or bad. You weigh them out, you decide what you want to do, right. and you reap the rewards or you eat crow sometimes. Yeah, and then you learn yeah. from that hopefully, Absolutely. right? Yeah. But if you came from retail, there had to be many times you're sitting there like, who made this call? They had never written a mortgage in their life. Right. Right. At least for us, that, that was definitely an ongoing thing, but now you have that freedom. So enjoy it. I'm sure you know, like you've had this picture in your head. Like this is the way my company is going to be. Don't lose vision. Be you, you know, execute your plan. Don't measure your success based on somebody else in a different state or whatever. 
measure your data and your improvements as you go. Um, and everybody's in a different stage of growing their business yeah, too. Everybody's success is completely different. Some people want to maybe close five loans a month, go mm -hmm. play golf every day. Some people right. want to close 50 loans a month and they love working and you know, that's their thing. It, everybody's right. situation is different. You can't measure your success off of purely off of numbers. Right. No. Um, you know, it, it all comes to work life balance for some, you know, there's a lot of different aspects that create success mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity to decide what way you want to go now that you're an independent broker. Absolutely. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a great feeling. Make your own decisions. Absolutely. Yep. Execute your vision. Um, well, being a broker is by far the best thing that we've done for our careers. Hands down. Right? Yes. What was one I, of the biggest I want to, I, I literally, so I was on Facebook and I would be looking and I would see brawl. And I would be coming into Mike's office and I would just be like, I got goosebumps. Yeah. I'd be like, dude, look at these rates that they're talking about. His thing always was, those rates don't exist. You don't know what their point yet. There's you a don't know what the comp is. You don't yeah. know, like, like there's yeah. just, those could be raw rates. There's and, a lot that goes into it. Right. And it was just time after time and just feeling the margin compression of where our rates were going and where things like that were at. To where it was like, Mike, we need to explore this. We need to, we need to do this. And that was. It was like that's not what it happened at all. It was way more aggressive than that. <laughs> way more. No, and and that's what it took. Um, I'm so happy that he did that. That Sam Parker, a good friend of mine, introduced me to Evan Wade. That then introduced me to Anthony Casa. Like literally within a two week time frame, we flew right. to Philadelphia and, and we're talking about how to um, become a, a mortgage broker. And they were very helpful in making that um, transition. Right. Couldn't have done it without them. They actually gave me information that I felt comfortable and believed. So we could make the leap. Right. Yeah. Um, and we, we came back, we brought it up to our team and they had no idea. No. And then it was all right. In one month, we're yeah. going to be unemployed, mm -hmm. but then we're going to be employed again. Yep. And Let's do this. And they all came with us. They had the, they could have stayed if they wanted to. They all came and then everybody is extremely happy to be, to be here. So again, I don't know where everybody's at in their journey or whatever. Just know that like for us, it was life changing, just absolutely life changing. The freedoms yes. of everything. One of our LOs, she's a, we're, we always ask the team like, you know, what, can, what should we have done different? What should we do? You know, get their feedback. It's important. And her number one thing always is, is yeah, we should have did this five years ago. Yeah. You're right. Yep, absolutely. But, you know, one of our niches that we like to do concentrate on is helping veterans. And that was a turning point for us is when uh, we realized what we could be offering veterans. Um, you know, rates, no, fees, all that. No yeah. closing costs, rates in the twos. And that's not what we were offering. And we were claiming to be veteran advocates. We couldn't do that in good faith and, and stay there. And so now that we're doing that, um, we're just on the mission to educate uh, people about mortgage brokers and uh, how to get the best deal. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's freaking awesome. It's life changing. It is so awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully you guys still have that type of energy. If not, call me or Brian, we'll get, we'll pick you back up. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah. So when you transition over and if you're newer, right. Um, all those retail people that are like, oh, you're going to get, you're not going to make any money. Those rates aren't whatever. Do all their loans for free. Call them all up, say, I'll, I'll refinance you one for free. And pretty soon they'll see those rates and costs that you do for them. And they'll be coming to work for you. That's a great, great marketing strategy. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else you want to touch base on? No, I, I mean, welcome to the broker world. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean welcome. Everybody, and I know I speak for thousands of people, welcome. We're all here as a resource for you. Um, whatever you need to help um, the transition, take you to the next level. Um, I know there's a lot, believe me, it's a lot of stuff. Um, I would only suggest though, if you you know had your choice, not to make the leap during a global pandemic. I'm just if you, if you have your choice, don't do it. It's a lot. Well, guys, I hope you found this uh, useful. And remember, in order to be part of the community, you need to be active in it. Go to all the events that you can. 
um, be active online, ask questions, answer questions, you will get the help that you need. People will treat you with nothing but kindness and respect, even if you think, oh, this is kind of a, a, a simple question. I don't want to ask it, I'm, you know, whatever. Ask it. I guarantee you there's 10 more people that don't know. Right. Yeah, we're stronger together. Stronger together. Thanks for tuning in. Um, next week, check. don't forget, check out next week's sales rally. You don't want to miss it. It'll be awesome.